Hey guys, how are you today? We are here for another video for the Digital Background Exchange group that I am doing um, this year and last year with Bea Grob. Uh, this year we have, besides myself and Bea, we have Chelsea and Ayala Art. I will say to start off with, it has been a joy working with the ladies uh, this year. I don't think we're going forward with it again next year, but it has truly been a joy to work with all of the women involved in this project, and I have had a lot of fun. So, the, all of that being said, um, let's get started for winter of 2020. Now, as always, everyone has contributed a digital uh, piece of background art and um, for all of us to work with. So there's four pieces of art, one from each artist, and then we are given freedom to create something and show you what we do with it um, however we wish. So I thought this, this time, because of where my headspace is at at the moment, and I'm really focused on making DIY supplies and working on my December daily positive affirmations journal, making homemade stickers. Do you see where this is going? <laughs> so you're looking right now at my computer. Now I have an Apple. You can do this in any computer, um, in a PC, you want to use any, whatever word processing program you have, whether you have Microsoft Word or Publisher. I'm going to show you a couple of kind of fancy things to do. If you have a Mac and you have pages, um, I don't remember how to do these on a PC. I have had PCs in the past, but it's been so long I don't remember. So I can't tell you how to do some of these steps in a PC. So you'll have to kind of fish around and figure it out, but I'll show you how to do it on a, um, on an Apple. Now this is Microsoft, pa I mean Apple Pages, which is similar to Microsoft Word. Um, and I'm going to, I have an empty document here. I'm going to take the four files of background art, which are over here on the right, and I'm going to highlight them all and then drag and drop them into pages. Then I can close this. Now I'm going to take each one of these and just make them a little smaller so I can manipulate them a little bit better. And this one here is mine, and so we will start, we'll start with that one. Um, so one of the things I, wa I want to do, and I don't think I need to do it to all of them, but I'm definitely going to do it to my own, is I'm going to have, while I have the image open and clicked on, I'm going to go over here to the right and hit image and instant alpha. And then I can scroll to a color if you see this, this square that's in the middle of the screen. In this case, the white. I want to take the white background out. And anything that shows up blue as I move the cursor or the mouse will end up disappearing. Now, I don't necessarily want to get rid of all the gray and white, but I want to get rid of some of it. Maybe. No, that's too much. So you can reset. Maybe I don't want to get rid of any of it. Maybe it looks okay without it. Mm. Maybe, it, maybe I like it. Maybe I take it back. But anyway, if you want to get rid of it, that's how you do it. I'm going to put this one up here in the corner. Let's look at this one. Let's make it a little bigger. This one is from Ayala, I think. What happens if we get rid of the white on here? I don't know that it needs it. But if you want to get rid of the white background, that's how you do it. Let's see, I'm gonna... I want them all to be the same size or similar size, so I'm gonna go to Arrange. I'm going to take off constrained proportions. So right now, because it's clicked, that means that I can make it bigger or smaller, but it's going to keep it in the same basic shape or ratio of size. If I unclick this, I can stretch it lengthwise and widthwise a little bit. So I'm going to do that because I want them to kind of be... Oh, I forgot to do it on this one. I want them to be the same size. There we go. Okay, on this one, this is Shell's. She did a beautiful job on hers. 
Um, what I want to do on this one is I want to rotate it. So I'm going to go down here and turn it. Again, this is different um, depending on what program you have. Take off that constraint. Oops. I don't think that's exactly straight. Let's see. Let's try that. Okay, I already have a piece of Avery label paper in the printer. Um, it's I use the full sheet label paper 8465. And we are going to make these out of, into stickers. Well, a sheet of sticker. That's where my brain is at at the moment. Let's go back here and see if I need to. I don't think I need to take any white out. I was thinking I need to take white out, but anyway. Now you, now you know how to do it if you need to. Ooh, no. So, I always check, but I don't think even on mine I need to take the white out. So you can see the colors are shades of blues and purples, cool wintry colors. I want to have these images go oops, as much to the edge of the paper as we can. That works. So we're going to go up here to File, Print. It'll just kind of do a preview. Print one from one to one. And we're going to print that and then we'll take it to the table. Okay, you don't need anything fancy to do this. You can do this with a sheet of the sticker paper, a label paper, and a pair of scissors. Certainly if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, you can cut some shapes out of the label paper once it's been printed with your Silhouette or Cricut. I had a Silhouette, I gave it away because I did not like using it and I thought it was wasteful and very the software I thought was frustrating and I much prefer to work with my Big Shot. I do own one, I do have dies, and so I prefer to work with this. Now, I was in my closet pulling out my snowflake die, which I've been using for my December daily, and I get cut, among others, snowflakes like this one, and it's a Sizzix Tim Holtz Thinlets die. I will put the um, a link to it in the description. I got it on Amazon. But as I was in there, I saw my, he my set of hexagon dies. And this is also a Sizzix die, and I think we're gonna cut hexagons out of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a pair of scissors and cut these in half. I could grab my paper trimmer, but I'm not going to. Now this label paper, paper is a full sheet label, so once you have it printed, you can cut whatever shape you want out of it. You're not relegated to the normal rectangles or circles that is already pre-cut out of the Avery paper. Okay, I'm going to use a magnetic platform. And this is um, Sizzix number 660839, by the way. I got this because I like to do English paper piecing. I need to put a um, one of these under there. I'm aware of that before somebody says anything. <laughs> I'm aware. Okay, I think I'm going to do like four sizes. Okay, let's take these off of here. Put one on the bottom. You can tell I use it a lot because that's really scratched up. If you can see that, I don't know how bad the glare is on the camera. So we're going to try to not waste too much paper. Okay. And always um, I run it through two or three times.
And then you have a DIY sticker that you can use in your planner, in your journal. on Christmas cards if you um, are making homemade Christmas cards. So I will go and I will use every piece of this that I can. I am finding that I'm having a lot of fun making my own DIY stickers rather than buying store-bought ones. I thought maybe I had a brief moment of thinking that I would just use up all the stickers that I had and then not buy any more. Well, that hasn't happened. I've discovered I really like using stickers and I especially like making stickers and doing a DIY sticker out of some kind of digital download from somebody, either my own or someone else's. Look at that. So you could even save this piece and use that piece as for something. So I am going to finish making all of my stickers. I will f speed forward through the process and I'll be right back. guys there you have it so quick simple easy just make some stickers make some DIY stickers I'm really enjoy use enjoying using the ones I've been making and I have to film some de December daily pages today and I can already tell you some or all of these will be used in that so if you want to see the pages that I've done with these stickers in my December daily um, <laughs> Well, stay tuned. Um, sometime after day 20, there's a playlist so you can scroll forward to the pages if you want. Um, I hope that we've brought you a lot of ideas of what you can do with digital downloads that you purchase um, from different creators over on Etsy or other sites um, in support of their artwork, but also because you love their artwork, what can you do with it besides just print it on paper and use it um, as collage fodder for your journals or your journal covers? You can print it on fabric. You can print it on um, sticker paper. You can do almost anything with it. So I really want you to stretch your imagination and come up with some ideas. I'd love to see what you're doing. If you want to share, you can tag me in a post over in one of my two or both of my two uh, Facebook art groups, My Creative Year and A Life of Art and Self-Expression. 
You can also go watch the other ladies' videos, um, like, share, and subscribe to their channels, if you will, and of course mine. Um, see what they've come up with. And um, yeah, support the free content. I know all or most of them have a way um, to support the free content. Some have Etsy shops, some have Patreon, some have PayPal tip jars, uh, YouTube membership, myself included. So check out the video descriptions always on your favorite creators. Some of them, like myself, have a link tree list of links in the video description, and that has my Instagram and my Facebook art groups and my Etsy shop and all that stuff. Um, so check it out. and. You know, stay safe, stay healthy, please wear a mask. Big hugs to everybody this crazy holiday season. And, um, you know, go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Make some stickers. They're a lot of fun to make and to use. That's it for today. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.